This is SSP TV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. The day before Donald Trump's inauguration, we'll talk with one of his supporters, Congressman Lou Barletta, and tell you about a protest against Trump being held in Hazelton. Good evening. It's great to be with everyone, and thank you for watching. I'm Ken Kara, and this is SSP TV News, your place for 24 hours of your hometown news and information. And here's our Thursday headlines from SSP TV and the Hazelton Standard Speaker. The American Red Cross needs your help to ensure that life-saving blood is available when needed. Lisa Sugar reports. The winter months are always a tough time for the American Red Cross. Blood supplies are in dire need, and that is surely the case right now. Here to tell us all about this need and how you can help is Dave Skutnik, the Regional Communications Manager for the American Red Cross. Dave, it's serious because if you don't have blood on the shelves, for people out there who may need it, they can't get that help. Yeah, absolutely. The uh, blood is actually going out of the Red Cross and two hospitals faster than we're taking it in. So that blood shortage that we have right now continues to increase. And one of the reasons for it, it it's fairly common, unfortunately, this time of year in the winter months, you know, uh, the number of blood drives goes down significantly over the holidays. People are busy, so they don't necessarily have time to donate. Then you factor in the winter weather, which we haven't had much of, but some other parts of the country have been more affected by that than us. So that cuts down on the overall blood supply. And then number three, I know I've been battling it. You get those coughs and colds that go around through the holidays and seem to linger through January. So that also cuts down on the number of people that can donate. You add it all up and it means a pretty significant blood shortage we're looking at right now. So you're hoping that people will come out because you have two right here in our area tomorrow and then another one on Monday. So there are ample opportunities to donate. We sure do. I've got the Red Cross blood app right here on my cell phone and you can always look up a blood drive near you. Two of them tomorrow, as you mentioned, one at the Laurel Mall in the afternoon from 1.30 until 6.30. And then we have a second one at MMI Prep in Freeland. That is from noon until 5 coming up on Friday. And then we have another one, a big one coming up on Monday. And that one's at the Graham Building on the uh, campus of Penn State Hazleton. And that one also runs uh, from 11 a.m. until 4 p.m. So three opportunities to roll up a sleeve and donate between now and Monday. Do they have to make an appointment? Do they just show up? What do you recommend? You can show up, but we do recommend making an appointment. It makes sure that there is a slot available for you, and it'll cut down on your wait time a little bit if the blood drive is busy. You can also download the Red Cross Blood Donor app on your cell phone, and you can actually take care of some of the pre-registration stuff before you even go, and that'll cut down on that wait time even more. It will get you right in, get your sleeve rolled up, uh, get your blood donation, and get you right back out the door and on to the rest of your day. It's quick, it's painless, and it can save one blood blood donation up to three lives. Wow, that's amazing. So if people, if they don't use the app, maybe some people aren't app friendly or what, <laughs> do they call, do they go online, what do they do? Yeah, you can call 1-800-RED-CROSS and you can make a blood appointment right there or you can go to our website, uh, the old fashioned way, redcrossblood.org and that'll give you a list of drives and you can also do some of the registration stuff there as well. Are there any certain blood types that are especially in demand or just all of them? It's all types right now, yeah. Sometimes a year we have certain blood types that are short. Right now it's across the board, everything is in a significant shortage. So we still have that emergency need for blood. So yes, one of those three blood drives coming up right here in the Hazleton area, two of them tomorrow, another one on Monday. Lastly, who's eligible to donate? Uh, you have to be over the age of 13. You have to be in fairly good health. Yeah, so the coughs and colds unfortunately means you probably should hold off donating until you're feeling a little better. But uh, really, it's open to just about everybody. All right, and if they need more information, they can go to the website, give a call, or download that app because that'll definitely help you out. But again, two opportunities to donate tomorrow at the Laurel Mall from 1.30 until 6.30 at MMI Preparatory School in Freeland from 12 to 5, and then Penn State Hazleton in the Graham Building Monday, 11 to 4. I hope that you will... Do what Dave said, roll up your sleeve, and help. Thanks, Lisa. In other news, seven people are homeless as a result of a fire yesterday morning in Shenandoah. The flames broke out at 228 West Center Street. That residence sustained major damage with the two adjoining homes suffering minor smoke, fire, and water damage. A state police fire marshal determined that the fire was accidental. Tomorrow at noon, Donald J. Trump will be sworn in as the nation's 45th president. Among those in attendance, Congressman Lou Barletta, who not only supported Trump, but is also a member of the Trump Transition Team Executive Committee. But 65 Democratic members of Congress will not be attending. Disappointed in, in the fact that, uh, you know, their reason for not being there. You know, it's one thing, I believe, 
you know, for, for a member of Congress not to go because something else, uh, you know, something else came up. But, but to purposely not go because you were boycotting uh, the legitimacy of this election is, uh, is insulting to the American people. Uh, the, the American people who voted and elected this president. The congressman will be a guest on the Sam LaSan show this evening at 7.30 p.m. and 11 p.m. on SSPTV and SSPTV.com. Check your local listings for additional dates and times. Meanwhile, a peaceful protest has been scheduled for tomorrow in Hazleton for those opposed to the presidency of Donald Trump. The march being organized by Maria Giacchetti will begin at 9 a.m. at Memorial Park near the intersection of West Diamond Avenue and Church Street. According to our media partner, the Standard Speaker, Giacchetti received permission from Hazleton's police and code enforcement departments. Well, have you gotten your ticket yet for the 2017 Grey Dog Raffle? The raffle is a major fundraiser for St. John Bosco Church in Cunningham with major prizes up for grabs. First prize is a choice of a two-year lease on a 2017 Cadillac S XTS, the purchase of a 2017 Mazda 3 sedan, or $20,000 cash. Second prize, a trip to Vegas or Walt Disney World, or $2,000 cash. Plus, 15 people will each win $200 each. The, the tickets are $100 each. The winners will be drawn Super Bowl Sunday, February 5th. For tickets, call 570-788-1997. I can't give you $20,000, but I can give you a box of Frankie's Cold Pizza. Frankie's Cold Pizza and their Pizza Express is now bringing their box cold pizza to your door. You have a chance to win a box of 12 slices of Frankie's Cold Pizza with their signature sauce and cheese blend. Bake fresh all day with no preservatives. Call 570-459-9813, extension 104. Leave your name and number. The winner will be drawn at random. You must pick up your prize at Frankie's by the close of business on Sunday. Be sure to check out the delivery schedule for Frankie's Express on their Facebook page. Don't leave because the pizza part of the news is over. Stay tuned because we have information on a very important benefit happening this weekend. And in sports, we'll talk about photography, school, and more with Tamaqua Swim Captain Rebecca Kanaski. This is SSPTV News, brought to you by Samsung Productions and the Hazleton Standard Speaker. The community is coming together to help a family who lost their father and husband way too soon. A special pasta dinner is being held this Saturday evening. Here to tell us all about it is Lisa Connect. Lisa, this was your cousin, mm -hmm. uh, John Oliver from St. John's, passed away at the age of 46 awfully young and now his family is left saddened and also I guess financially distressed. Yeah they're financially burdened um, and my cousin's wife Lynn, her co-workers at the um, career center in the cafeteria decided that they would like to help and so they're putting together a dinner and also um, basket raffles. Um, so. And what made it so difficult, you told me, there was no life insurance and there's medical bills on top of that. So mm -hmm. it's a tough time and with two teenage children? Yes, yeah. Uh, Kayla is in ninth grade and uh, Alyssa will be graduating this year and going off to college. And, you know, it's just really unexpected. It's hard to lose their dad. And then, you know, for Lynn also losing her husband and, you know, just the financial burden then as well. That's really a shame. So the co-workers have stepped up and they created this pasta dinner. It's eat in or take out this Saturday from two to six at the Butler Township Fire Hall in Drums. You said there's a limited number of tickets, but there's not a limited number of tickets on people coming in to buy tricky trays. Right, they're only selling 300 tickets for the, for the dinner, but um, basket raffles, you don't have to attend the dinner in order to come in and purchase tickets for the basket raffle. You can just you know stop by check out the baskets, buy tickets, and go if you don't want to stay. And it's not just a couple of baskets. There's a lot. Right. As of right now, there between gift cards and baskets, there are over 120 that have been donated by people in the community, different businesses, and you know, just individuals in the community and family and so on and so forth. 
And this is an area that really loves tricky trays, including me. I mean, everybody loves tricky trays. So if you can't do the dinner, you know, you're not able to do that. Or if you can do both, that's wonderful. But if right. not, come in and take some chances. You might win some great prizes. Any tips on maybe what's there? Do you have any idea yet? Well, the grand prize is um, it's either a ton of coal or 100 gallons of heating oil, which is a great prize. Um, that was actually donated by one of Lynn's coworkers, their, their family's company. Um, I know there are a lot of restaurant gift cards, um, local business gift cards. Um, as far as the baskets, um, just everything you can imagine. I mean, people have been so great about donating things. This is such a great area for that. Everybody, you know, pulls together. That is so true. Very generous hearts right around here. Um, there's 300 tickets being sold for the dinner. If people want to get them in advance, what do they do? Um, people can call my cousin, um, Barbara Halsack. She's at Freeman Electric, um, so you can call her there the next couple of days. Um, and also, um, I believe um, Linda Bogert, who is the uh, main organizer, her number is 570-459-6272. Um, she's kind of been spearheading everything, and she has tickets as well. Okay, the tickets are $10, and again, they are being limited, but you hope that a lot of people will come out, and this is, again, taking place this Saturday from 2 to 6 p.m. at the Butler Township Fire Hall. I'm sure you're confident the community is going to come out and give this family the support it needs at this really difficult time. Yes, we are, and we really appreciate everyone who's donated, um, you know, things, prizes, and the ladies who are working really hard, and the kids from the Career Center as well who are going to be, you know, preparing and serving. Um, our family's just really appreciative. All right. Well, our condolences to the Oliver family, and please keep them in your prayers. And if you can come out and support them, again, it's this Saturday from 2 to 6, the Butler Township Fire Hall in Drums. Time now for weather on SSPTV News. If you like rain, gray skies, and 40-degree temperatures, you have been in paradise recently in our area. Here's a local forecast from the National Weather Service. Tonight, partly cloudy, low of 31 degrees. We'll have a light and variable wind. Friday, 80% chance of rain, so we'll see some mainly after 3 p.m., high near 38 degrees. Friday night, a 30% chance of showers, mostly cloudy, with a low of 36. On Saturday, mostly cloudy, high in the mid-40s. Saturday night, mostly cloudy, low of 39. On Sunday, 50% chance of rain cloudy with a high near 44 and then on Sunday night 60% chance of rain before 1 a.m. cloudy with a low around 33. We may also see some snow it will be breezy hazardous weather outlook for Monday and Tuesday as we could see a lot of precipitation rain likely on Monday high of 40 degrees Monday night rain with a low of 35 degrees again it will be breezy. The Greater Hazleton Chamber of Commerce will once again kick off its annual legislative series. It starts this month with the very first one. Here to tell us all about it is Leanne Falabelle, the Vice President of Marketing for the Greater Hazleton Chamber of Commerce. This is a really, uh, I guess, nice series that you do with so many people coming out because how often do you get to be one-on-one -on -one with your local lawmakers? Exactly, exactly. And that's exactly why we do this, to provide the business community an opportunity to have question and answer session and meet with our local legislators one-on-one. -on -one. Um, the first one, we always kick off the new year with um, the mayor of Hazleton. So we will have Mayor Jeff Cassatt on Tuesday, January 24th. And the programs run from 7.45 to 9 a.m. So you can get your information and then head off to work. And this one will be at the Pines in downtown Hazleton. And the mayor is just going to be providing an update of what has been going on in the city, what's currently going on in the city, and a nice overview of what has happened in the last year. And it's nice because if you have a question or anything, you are right there and they usually take questions from the audience. So that's a perfect opportunity because everybody works. They don't have the time maybe to do something like that. Exactly. It is a very unique opportunity and we do encourage our members to take advantage of it. Um, you know, you think that maybe it's easy to reach out to the legislators you know they're busy just like everybody else so we really encourage our members to take advantage of it um, we like you said it's the first in our legislative series we do them every month uh, through the chamber um, other legislators that we're going to be having coming up is our state senator John Udichek our state representative Tara Tuhill um, we always have a representative from the Luzerne County come and present um, our United States Congressman Lou Barletta. So they'll be coming up in the next months and everybody can stay tuned to our chamber calendar for them. So if they want to get involved with these, these are the red carpet breakfast, so how do they sign up? 
they can go to our website, just simply go to our website. We do have a member rate and a non-member rate. Um, hazeltonchamber.org is our website. Go to the date, again, it's uh, Tuesday, January 24th, and just register right online, or they can simply call our office at 570-455-1509. Alrighty, the red carpet breakfast, that first one coming up Tuesday, January 24th, starting at 7.45 a.m. It is at the Pines right here in downtown Hazleton. If you would like to find out what is going on in the city of Hazleton, the prime opportunity, take part in all of the legislative series that is being presented by the Greater Hazleton Chamber of Commerce. Breakfast sounds good right now. I hope some of these numbers sound good to you. Here's your midday winning lottery numbers on our green screen. Pick 205, pick 3958, pick 4, 2302, pick 5, 33856. When we come back, we'll talk with Rebecca Kanaski from the Tamaqua swimming team. She has a very interesting story. Stay tuned. Time now for sports on SSP TV News. Welcome to sports and I'm here with Rebecca Kanaski, a senior at the Tamaqua Area High School, very successful swimmer, just scored her 1,000th point, but I'll probably get to swimming about five minutes into the interview because I said you're a renaissance woman. I just met her, but in doing research, you have a very interesting story and we're going to get to it right now. So when I Googled your name and I found all these articles, but I saw you had photos published. So talk about that. Was that like a hobby or you just got into that? Um, well, originally my sister started off with photography and that kind of got me really into it and um, my dad gave me his old film camera okay. and that kind of started like a whole new thing for me and I had this great photography teacher here at school and she really encourages me to, to um, put my name out there and go into contests and I happened to have two uh, photos featured in the Susquehanna Apprentice uh, Writer magazine this year so that was a really big deal for me and um, I was also working uh, at Mud and Maker, which is a pottery um, uh, shop in Pottsville, and I was doing photography for them as well, and it was just, it's, it's been a really fun time. <laughs> so your sister was into, was your sister a swimmer too? I see two yeah. last names up there. Very yeah, up there. Uh, my sister's four years older than I am, okay. so when she graduated high school, I came up into it. I've been following her footsteps for all my life, and um, to get my thousand points, uh, I, my name is going to be under hers on a banner. My name is under hers over there. It's just been, it's an amazing to share that with her now. Let's go back to the photography. So the f one photo I believe was called um, Fog of Athletes. Just talk about, what was that? Um, actually, it's a really good story. It was before a triathlon, one morning at like maybe six or seven o'clock in the summer. And I was doing the swimming portion for my relay because I can't run and I can't bike, can't do anything besides swim. Um, so I was about to get in the water and start the race. And I looked over and I saw the fog rolling in and I saw the sun just like illuminating everyone's um, silhouettes. And I was like, mom, grab my camera. I can get this. This is a great shot. And I sat there and I was like, oh, amazing. And I was like, all right, goggles on. Let's go. Let's, let's swim like this like mile race right now. And that's what I did. I also heard from your coach, you're like number one or two in your class. Are you really like school as well or are you just good at it? <laughs> um, <laughs> A little bit of both. Um, I'm not, I wouldn't say that I love math, but I'm apparently pretty good at it. But um, I just, I, I've always tried as hard as I could, um, especially, even in races where it's like, you don't have to go so hard, you might win this one, but I just, I've never been one to back off from a challenge. So in school, when they're like, you can take this AP course or this AP course, and it's going to be hard, but I just, it's whatever. I, I do it anyways, because it's, it's, it's in me, I think. <laughs> You told me now, maybe not swimming in college on the swim team traditionally, but you want to get into open water swimming, which terrifies me when I think about it. But explain that, like lakes, oceans, maybe? I mean, like um, I've done swims of up to one to three miles. I actually swam in the Chesapeake Bay a couple of years ago. It's kind of scary because you can't see the bottom at all, but it's, I think it's so much more challenging because it's like it's, you're out there on your own and you're just like swimming for hours at a time and you're self-sustaining. So it's, it's really hard, but not a lot of people can do it, which is kind of why I think I, I really like to do it. <laughs> so is it organized in college, or is this just like a free, like free kind of thing? You get involved with different races? Um, I usually do my swims through the YMCA. Okay. So when I'm in college, I could continue to do that through the YMCA. But um, actually, a lot of the schools that I'm looking at are right near uh, bodies of water and big lakes. So thousand point you've just accomplished it you had a very successful school goal sprints what was that weekend like are you exhausted you seem like a person like you said you keep pushing is there a point you do get tired um that would be like right now um yesterday i woke up feeling probably the worst i've ever felt 
and I thought I had a fever and I was feeling awful. But I went in, I took my two midterms and I went to the meet <laughs> last night and I was like, you know, maybe I'll feel better by tomorrow. But um, last week, three meets in a row, it was difficult, but at the same time, it's like uh, being a captain myself, I can't let my team down. And I feel like, I'm not actually sure if this even happens, but I feel like if my spirit is down, everybody's down, even if I don't let them see it. So like, I always feel like I have to keep going, have to keep going, even during practice. I wasn't feeling great today, you can hear, I sound like I sound pretty bad. But um, it's, it's, it's important for me to push them so that they'll get better even when I'm not here. So this weekend was kind of like showing them that, yeah, it's hard, I know it's hard, but you can do this and I can do this and we can do this together. What do you want to do? Like 10 years, of doing photography, we'd be swimming. I mean, is there like an end point or is it kind of like, I'll see where, where life kind of takes? <laughs> um, I think there's a bit of an end point. I really like to own a small business because I feel like I've been surrounded by them my whole life. And to be honest, I love to just go out there and do my own thing. I love to be independent. And I, I couldn't really see myself working under a ton of people for a long time. So I feel like I want to own my own business, maybe like a coffee shop, maybe a bookstore. I'd love to do my hobbies on the side. And I definitely, I want to, I want to encourage other people to do things that they love. I have to tell you, Rebecca, I was thinking about going to the gym tomorrow and I was kind of being lazy about it. But after talking with you, you have that positivity. I'm going, I will do it. I think your future right. plans will probably work. You can inspire people. Her story is getting better and better here at Tamaqua. Keep following it in the newspaper and on SSP TV. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. First tonight, kindergarten registration in the Hazleton Area School District for the 2017-2018 school year will be held in the administration building by appointment only from 3.30 p.m. to 6.30 the following days for each individual school. February 6th, Drums, 7th, Freeland, 8th, West Hazleton, 9th, Hazel Township, 13th, Valley, 14th, Arthur Street, 16th, McAdoo Clares, 22nd, Heights Terrace. To schedule an appointment or for additional information, please call 570-459-3111, extension 3000. Our next announcement, Christ Lutheran Church in Cunningham will be holding their annual Super Bowl soup sale Saturday, January 28th. Be having 14 varieties of soup available and proceeds benefit local charities. Call to order by January 23rd, 570-788-4219. And finally, Holy Rosary Parish, 240 South Poplar Street in Hazleton, be hosting a free community luncheon Saturday, February 11th from 11 a.m. to noon in the community room of the church. All are welcome to attend, and the parish would like to thank the Weinberg Northeast Regional Food Bank. More info, just call 570-455-6390 at tonight's Talk of the Town. SSP TV News would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Harriet M. Barish of Plymouth. Funeral is Saturday at 9.45 a.m. from the S.J. Gronkowski Funeral Home. Friends may call Friday from 5 to 8 p.m. and Saturday from 8.30 to 9.45 a.m. Ronald W. Reiner of Weatherly. Private arrangements are by the Philip J. Jeffries Funeral Home. Catherine T. Ursta, formerly of Cunningham. No local services were announced. And Michael T. Gayerko, Sr. of Sandy Valley. The McHugh Wilcheck Funeral Home will announce complete arrangements. Attention pay-per-view subscribers, if you see your name right now on SSP TV News, you'll have 13 minutes to call in and win a free movie from Service Electric Cablevision. The winner tonight is Frank Wills Sr. of Hazleton. Frank, if you're watching, give us a call, 570-455-7267, extension 104. Tamaqua swimmer and photographer Rebecca Kanaski did try our video camera. I'll upload that part of the story you did not see to our Facebook page. And I'll see you all again tomorrow. Take it easy, everyone. Watch us online anytime at ssptv.com and follow us on Facebook and Twitter.